because he's jumping right over me. I am tethered shooting at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape the cable down. We don't want any accidents. Please don't do it unless you are absolutely certain that you know what you're doing. Tape the cable down so he can drive over it. There's no slack cable, so there are no accidents. We hope there's no accidents. Because I'm laying on my back, I can't move forwards or backwards. I have pre-focused, so I don't need out of focus anymore. What I'm going to do, and that's very important for motion, is I'm going to switch to manual focus. At this moment, I can't touch my lens, of course, because then I will be out of focus. But that way you will have your fixed focus on that point and you will nail it. At this moment we're shooting on F16. That will give you a nice wide range of depth of field. So when he's jumping a little bit higher or a little bit lower, it still will be there. We're shooting with the Ranger and normally we shoot the Rangers on full power because on full power they have the most stopping power. So on low power they will be a little bit slower in flash duration. On full power they will be very fast. So when you're freezing motion try to put your strokes on full power. This is for the Allengrom system. There are other systems out there that work the other way around, like on-camera strobes, like the SB900s or the 580AX. The lower the output, the faster they are. But for the Allengrom kit, the higher the output on the strobe, the faster they will freeze the motion. I've set up the strobes now. And I'm using one and I'm aiming it straight at the biker. Although it looks really nice, the crew here are saying, that's an awesome shot. And I told them the first shot we will take, that's a bad shot. They already like it. So let's see if we can improve on that. First, we're gonna do some more of the, I think, not so awesome shots. And then we'll change the light. We'll change the direction of the light and get a totally different look. So Nick, can we do one or two more just to get into it? Sorry. What I want to do is I want to change to a more directional light. I want to be hit from behind with strobes, so it's more of a silhouette look. Maybe add some little lights into the image, just to make it different. This is really straight on. It's like an on-camera strobe, just aimed at him, and well, it's flat. So let's make it a little bit more directional and three-dimensional. The best thing to do at a shoot like this is to stay in your own location. I've now seen what the biker is doing. I've seen his trajectory of his jump. And it's nice to have assistance because from a distance you can exactly see where the lights are going to be. And because it's a lot of movement up and down, it's better to have a few people handling the lights. So you can stay in your own position, make sure you got the shot. And when you're laying on your you have to change your lights. Probably you will say, ah, just leave it there and we Photoshop it out. Now when I'm laying on my back, I can exactly see what's going on and I can say to one of my assistants, please move it a little bit more to the left or more to the right. And you will get the perfect shot. We've painted the first light. What I did is I painted the rim light. As you can see, the light is litting him from the back and the front is still dark. I want that high contrast look. The only thing I need now is some fill-in flash. And that's where the quadras are gonna come in. For people asking, why am I using two quadras in the front while I'm only using one direction? There's a little trick you have to know about the quadras. Where you connect both the A and the B heads together, you get a very, very fast sync duration. And that's to freeze the motion. When you're using only one, the flash duration will be approximately half. But I want that one direction of light. So I'm using them both very close together so they act as one light source. If you want it a little bit softer, no problem. Just take out some diffusion material. You could use a five in one reflector. You know where the five in one comes from? You have the black, you have the silver, you have the gold, and you have the white. And a lot of people ask me, where's the fifth? That's the ring in the middle. It's called translucent material. When you shoot through it, it will give you a nice diffused quality of light. So this is really hard light, but I like it that way. I like the high contrast look of hard light. So when you use the diffusion material, it will be a little bit softer. But for today, we're gonna use the bare head quadras. And remember, I'm not using any accessories on the quadras. I try to keep it simple. We take the quadras with us. They already come with a nice dish. So we use the dish only. No extra accessories needed. In essence, we're sandwiching our model between two lights. 
it will be an awesome shot. It will give you three dimensionality, it will give you depth of field, and it will give you just stopping motion action. Yes. Okay, do some more. Okay, one more. Oh my. Yeah, do that again. We're gonna give him a little bit more light of the quadras in his face. And we're gonna put the Ranger one stop down. The quadras stay the same. So I'm opening my lens to F11. Instead of F16, I'm now going to F11. So in reality, the sky will be a little bit brighter because I'm going to F11, but probably you will have a little bit more light on his face because his face was a little bit too dark. One more time. That was close. Remember, when you're shooting with lights relatively close like this, you have something called the inverse square law. It means over distance, the light will fall off. That's why I had to open one more stop. The lights are actually really close to my, uh, to my BMXer. At the moment that he jumps, and the lights are just a little bit off, because they're close, it will cost me about half a stop. So I decided to open up to F11, one stop down, and just adjust it a little bit. You can't really measure this very accurately because he's in a different place anyway. You just have to try it a little bit. Normally I'm a guy who measures and he trusts his meter and stays that way. Now I use my meter to set it up, watch on the monitor if it's okay, and if it's not okay, I will do some adjustments on set. That's no problem at all because he's in a different location constantly. Mm -hmm. 